It says here that Jesus, this is in red, so we're talking about Jesus. And he entered into a certain village and there met him 10 men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. What power Jesus has in his words. Verse 15. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. And he fell down on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus, let's keep on going, two more verses here. And Jesus answering said, were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? There are not found that. Return to give glory to God, except this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. Word got out that Jesus was coming to town. Now, I don't know if you've done many studies or research about leprosy back in that day. But when someone is under the Jewish covenant, when someone was supposed to have leprosy, a white spot would show up somewhere in their body, they would have to go to the priest. The priest would be the one who would declare over them that they were either clean or they were unclean. Sometimes people would get a spot and they wouldn't know if it was leprosy or not, but the priest evidently, they had to be a bivocational because they also had to be able to diagnose if this was a spot of leprosy or if it was something else. Sometimes they'd have to say, come back in another week and let's check it again before they would declare them unclean. But once a person is declared unclean, it became very obvious to everybody because all of a sudden you are in quarantine. Remember this, this verse says at the 10, when they started to see and they know that Jesus was there, they were standing afar off. Why? Because they weren't allowed to get around people. These people were respecting what the priest had declared over them, that they were unclean. And when even the woman with the issue of blood who had been declared unclean, even though it was, wasn't leprosy, she was supposed to call out while she's in this crowd trying to get to the hem of Jesus' garment. She was supposed to be crying out, unclean, unclean. These men are supposed to be calling out unclean, but what are they calling out? <laughs> Isn't this beautiful? They lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. We talked about this word mercy means have compassion on us. Yes. They weren't calling out unclean. They were calling out for mercy because they knew Jesus, the Master, was coming to town. We have some hope. We have some help that is on the way. You never know when people are looking to you saying, I know they know how to pray. Amen. They know how to touch God. Amen. Don't ever act so busy that you don't have time when somebody says, can I talk to you for a minute? Please don't say to them, you know, I just don't have time right now. Look, their heart was open. We know that people have been in crisis in their life. And our response is, if you need anything, Call me. And they never do. Or rarely do. But in these moments when these men are asking for help, Jesus paid attention. Yes, he did. Isn't that beautiful? Lord, have mercy on us. Because it says that Jesus saw them. You ever feel like Jesus isn't watching what you're doing? He didn't notice. See, as we've grown in the things of God, we know that whenever I call upon his name, whether I feel like it or not, I know he's heard me. Amen. If we ask anything according to his will, 1 John 5, verse 14 and 15, if we have to ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Amen. And it goes on to say, and we know that if he hears us, we have the petitions 
that we have desired of him. So when we come to the Lord, we know that he hears us. Why? Because one, we're asking in his name. That is the pathway, right? Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior, the one who died for me at Calvary, rose again, caused me to be born again when I called upon him. He came into my life, and I thank you for what you've got for me and done for me. And Lord, I'm coming to you because I've got a need. Hebrews chapter 4 tells us that if we can come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain. Amen. I love that. To obtain. I don't come to the throne of grace hoping I'm going to get it. You, oh, faith, hope, and love, those are all important. But when you're praying in hope, you're not praying in faith. Come on. Lord, if it be your will. That, see, that's hope. Now, Jesus goes on to tell this man that it's his faith that made him cleanse. Now, let's go back over here to verse 14. When he saw them, he said unto them, go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went. See, there was faith right there. They didn't even have to have Jesus lay hands on them. He just declared they were here. So they turned around. Where are they going? They're going to the priest. He's the one who said that they were unclean. Now they're going to the priest to hear the declaration of clean. Oh, isn't that powerful? Because they wanted to be reunited with their family, their loved ones. Probably start to earn some money again. So they could come back into public. They needed that declaration that they're now clean. Amen. Amen. That's what they needed. So they could start to participate in life once again. But one of the ten, when he turned, just like the other nine, when he turned to go to the priest, he saw, I'm already clean. These places where leprosy was, gone. Isn't that powerful? Amen. Leprosy is one of those diseases that makes limbs fall off, makes fingers fall off. It does. We don't know what the condition of these men were, but we know that they were unclean. Amen. And it says that this man noticed he was already healed. Just by turning, obeying Jesus. And go. Remember, Jesus told some others, go to the priest. Let them declare you to be all right. You know, they're going to go tell everybody else, forget the priest. Forget the rabbi. I'm going to tell everybody I know that I'm healed. But these nine were going to go to the priest, get their declaration so they could be part of community life again. And yet this man sees that he's healed. And what is his response? comes to Jesus. And it says, with a loud voice. <laughs> can, you, can you just picture yourself that the Lord has just done something so precious and important to you in your life that you can't even whisper about it. Amen. I've got to tell you what Jesus did. Amen. But this man didn't even have time to go tell others what Jesus did first. No. Instead, this man had what we all need in our life, and that is gratitude. Yes. You know, back in the uh, late 90s, we were pastoring uh, there in my hometown. I'm sorry, in the late 80s. <laughs> Get that right. In the late 80s, pastor in our hometown, we were meeting in a place called Regal Hall. Some of those that may watch from my hometown will remember this place when we were meeting down there. It had been a movie theater at one time and the mayor bought it, pulled all the movie theater stuff off, just made it a hall. And we rented it every Sunday morning for church. We have to go in there and, you know, pull the cars up, the trailers up with all the equipment in there, set everything up.
because they were having a beer fest in there the night before, cast some devils out at a church, you know, spray some air freshener in the bathroom to get rid of that urine, fill the beer smell, you know, nasty. Yes. But that's where we were meeting and the Lord was doing great things. Yeah. During that time, I was just dealing with this in my heart about gratitude. Gratitude. I, I wrote a song in which I've lost, <coughs> lost the words to and lost the paper I wrote it on. Most of my songs were only beautiful to me. <laughs> but it was called The Attitude of Gratitude. The Attitude of Gratitude. You know, our attitude is up to us. And when we make a decision to have an attitude where we're going to be grateful. When the Lord does something in my life, the first person I need to be talking to is Him. I need to thank Him for what He's done to intervene in my life. You know, I used to tease my kids when they were little. They thought I had control over the traffic lights. You know, we'd be pulling up, you know, I could see the yellow over there. They didn't figure that out. In the name of Jesus, turn to green. Amen. I was always rebuking the snow. You know, I said, well, Daddy, look how much snow we got. And I would just tell him, think how much snow we'd have got if I wouldn't have been rebuking it. Amen. I was always just wanting to teach them about trusting the Lord no matter what. There are going to be things that happen. You know, I'd go, when I'd take my trips to Africa, that's when it happened the most. I always would get there Christmas to January because they would have their annual conference. So when I would go, that was the time I always went because I'd get to, to, to preach at it and have a wonderful time. But I'd always get a message from back home. Daddy, we had to, we had to cancel church today. I said, see, somebody should have been on duty rebuking snow. <laughs> Amen. Because I'm not there. They had to cancel church. <laughs> so they always saw, you know, little things like that. It's humorous when we look back on it. But when we think about just trusting God in everything we do. How many go to, go to Walmart or Kroger, wherever you go, and you're praying, Lord, give me a good parking space. <laughs> Come on, we do it, don't we? How many of us think that being humble is saying, Lord, make sure I get a parking spot on the very back of the parking lot out there. Because I'm so humble. No, we're praying for a good parking place. Amen. Amen. That we get a nice cashier. Amen. Over here at this Griffin Walmart anymore. That's ridiculous. I'm going to a different Walmart now. No more of those all self-checkout lanes, you know, you got a hundred people standing in front of you. Forget that. All right, that's off the subject. This man saw he was cleansed. And the first thing that he had to do was with a loud voice begin to thank him. And as he came back to Jesus, all he could do was just fall on his own face fell at the feet of Jesus. I just have to thank you. See, we can lose that in our life, where we lose that tenderness toward the Lord. That's something that we always have to cultivate, is to be thankful. We live in a day when prophecy tells us, if you look through Timothy, what Paul wrote to Timothy, was that in the last days that people will be unthankful. Amen. Oh, we're excited that the Lord healed us, but what about our gratitude to him for that healing coming to pass in our life? Because we've all had loved ones. They were sick. They were trusting God for a miracle, and their, their breakthrough, their healing didn't come through before they took their last breath. And we had to say goodbye to them for now. Oh, yeah. But their miracle didn't come. When our miracle shows up, we have something to be grateful for. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. When I didn't die in that bus accident, Lord, now I know you're really not done with me yet. 
Come on. There's still something for me to do. There is still a reason, Lord, why you left me here while others that I loved and cared for have gone on to their eternal reward. Yeah, I'm jealous they're gone and I'm still here. I'm starting to feel alone because so many of my loved ones are gone now that I'm one of the last remaining ones. But Lord, you've left me here. Let my years be spent in fruitfulness and in thanksgiving and in love and tenderness. And Lord, when I speak your name, may I have that attitude in my heart that I'm falling at your feet. Because one day when I stand before you, that crown that you place on my head, it's not staying on my head, Lord. Because I'm going to lay it at your feet. Because if it wasn't for what you did for me at Calvary, I couldn't even enjoy this time of being here with you now. Amen. Paul said for, I love this. I've used this in every funeral I've ever preached. That to depart, to be with Christ is far better. Amen. Oh, I want far better. Oh, yes. Don't you? Amen. But right now there's something to accomplish yes. in this world because the Lord, evidently, he's not done yet. Amen. The time of the Gentiles isn't evidently not quite finished yet. That day's coming. Yeah. And we might be counting the hours oh, yes. versus days. Yes. Amen. Amen. You're right. We just might be. I tend to feel in my heart the trumpet could blow quite soon. Oh, yes. Amen. I, I don't want my heart to be cluttered with other stuff. No. Unforgiveness, I ain't got time for you no more. No. You can just go. Yep. Come on, hurt feelings, you can just go. I ain't got time for you. Pain, agony, Whatever that it is, I just don't have time for it anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm about my father's business, don't you know? Mm -hmm. I'm about your business, Lord. But I want to be like this one man. Now, Jesus looked at him because it says that this man turned and saw that he was cleansed. Mm -hmm. And watch this word right here. Verse 15. Because they were all cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed. Mm -hmm. healed. Is there a distinction for us between cleansed and healed? Now Jesus is going to take it a whole other level right here. Because these men were cleansed. That's what they were asking for. So they can be declared Clean. Right? So cleanse is the right word. That's what they were trusting God for, is to be cleansed. Yeah. But this man turned around, saw that he was, help me, healed. And the first thing that came out of him was not the two step heading down to the priest. No, it was turning around to thank Jesus. To thank him. And watch Jesus' response to him. Verse 17. Where. Or were there not. Ten cleansed. But where. Are the nine. When you look in your own life. And people that. You know that old saying. Don't let your left hand know what the right hand's doing. There are people that you know. That you have. Helped along the way. And maybe, maybe it was many people. But very few of them ever came back to thank you. That is human nature. I don't know why people aren't thankful. Come on. You know that you've experienced this. When somebody helped you. During your time when you were down, did you go back to later thank them? Mm -hmm. 
I remember hearing a story about a lady. This was a minister that I cared for deeply. He prayed for a woman who was in a wheelchair. When he prayed for her, she got up out of that wheelchair. She started pushing around the altars. Oh, just so excited. And yet, she brought it back over here, put it back in front of the altar, and then went and sat back down in that chair. He said, sister, didn't the Lord just heal you? She said, I spent too much money on this chair not to use it anymore. <laughs> Sometimes we get too, <laughs> too reasoning when the Lord does something for us. When the Lord heals us, gratitude, thanksgiving ought to be vocal. Let the Lord hear you with his ears. Yes. Amen. Not just hear you with your with his heart. Amen. Come on, let it get in your mouth. The Bible tells us that we're to sing a new song. A song of praise will be in my mouth. Yes. Many shall hear it, Psalm 40 says, and shall fear and shall trust in the Lord. When they hear what God has done in you, let praise fill the house. Let praise take over. Give the Lord the credit. But Jesus received this thanks. Oh, for those who say, oh, Jesus was just a good teacher. I heard a comedian that I thought this was cute. He said, if Jesus was just a good teacher, why did they kill him? Because we don't take our teachers out today and kill the best ones. Amen. Amen. We don't. If Jesus was just a teacher, you don't know who Jesus is. Jesus was Lord and Savior, Messiah, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Amen. When Jesus received this man's praise, he said, Arise in verse 19. Go thy way, thy faith. faith. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. See, Jesus spoke over these others. They asked with a loud voice, Have mercy on us and heal us. Mm -hmm. You know, they got their miracle. But something didn't trigger gratitude in them. Something didn't trigger thanks in them. You know, I've watched the Lord heal a lot of people over the decades. And that's wonderful. It's disappointing when you see somebody got a miracle. And then you never see them again. Yeah. Yeah. I can think of people who would come visit church and have an outstanding revival. My goodness, the power of God. Fall. People coming from dead churches all over the place. There's no church at all. We have had Catholics coming into the church sometimes drunk. Get sobered up and get saved. Never see them again. We've watched other people come from dead churches. Oh, I came over here because I heard people were running around this place with their eyes closed. I got to see this because I heard about that a long time ago. Come, sit in that dead church, get filled with the Holy Ghost, never see him again. What is it about people who love dead churches? <laughs> now, he said, Arise, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. Huh. So we see Jesus making a distinction between being cleansed, being healed. And now, being whole. <laughs> Something tells me, this man ain't ever going to have a battle with leprosy again. Amen. Amen. I want to go from just being cleansed to being healed. Mm -hmm. I want to go from being healed and mix my faith with what the Lord has done to being whole. Yeah. There's some battles I don't ever want to have again. How about you? What changes that? Faith and praise. Yeah. Faith and thanksgiving. Where is our thanksgiving today? And only you know the answer to that. Do you have a heart of thanksgiving? 
You know, the Lord does little things in our life all day long. Yes. Yes. And a lot of times we don't even pay attention because it was just so, it looked so natural, we didn't realize the supernatural has invaded our life. And supernatural things happen in our life every day. Yes, they do. You know, I had a couple of people pass me to church this, on the way to church this morning with their in God we trust on the bottom. And I know an angel had to give them a little push so they didn't take the front bumper off the car. <laughs> I don't know where in the world they were in such a hurry to go. You know, I just set my cruise and I'm just going. You know, but some people, my goodness, they just punch the floor until it's time to change lanes. I watch, I watch one lane. She's over here where it's two lane. Then you get up there to where Expressway and, and uh, 1941 come together. So then it jumps up to three lanes, plus the lanes going over here to, to Walmart. This lady, she's driving all three lanes. I mean, she's jumping in between us, and there's a red light right there. Where is your Thanksgiving? <laughs> Amen. You're trying to make sure some of us don't get to have Thanksgiving this week. Amen. Right. If you're going to advertise that you live for Jesus, live for Jesus. Amen. Don't embarrass him. Right. Amen. Amen. The Lord is good. Yes, is. We have so much to thank him for. Final verse, Philippians 4. Philippians 4. We love Philippians 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. Rejoicing is loud. Don't you think? Yeah. Rejoicing is loud. Verse number 5. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. Verse 6. That means don't be anxious about things. Don't let worry get the best of you. But in everything by prayer. There we go. Prayer and supplication. supplication. That's another type of prayer. That's prayer making request. Supplication. But in every situation, the NIV says by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. When do we thank the Lord? After we get our prayers met? After we get our need met? After the answer comes through? No, we're supposed to be bringing our prayers and petitions to the Lord and thanking Him before He ever answers. Amen. Thanksgiving should be while you're praying the request, not till after it comes. I'm thanking the Lord every day. That's the life that we should be living. It'll increase your joy. It'll increase your peace. It'll reduce the amount of anxiety that you need if you're taking anxiety measures. And I bet if you start thanking the Lord for it, you might not need such a strong dose so you don't need it anymore. Amen. Remember over in Isaiah, it says he will keep us in perfect peace if we keep our minds stayed upon him. I want to encourage you this morning. Be the one of ten that thanks the Lord. Yes. When you look around, you know and see a lot of unthankfulness in this world. Oh, yes. And unfortunately, we see a lot of that in the lifestyle of even believers who aren't thankful. Oh, they'll take your help. They'll take your encouragement. But they are thankful. You should let the people in your lives know that you love them and pray for them, that you care for them, that you need them and appreciate their goodness to you. Amen. There's a lot of stinkers out there. They don't take your feelings in concern at all because it's all about them. Amen. They're saying that they've changed the words, but they've changed it. It's all about me, Jesus. Amen. They changed it. So it's always about them. Yes. Amen. I want it to be about him. Amen. Yes. Let him get the honor, the glory, the praise, and the thankfulness that he's longing for. Amen. You know as a mommy, as a dad, you know that you did more for your kids when they were thankful than when they were little brats. 
Amen. We try and instill gratitude in our children, don't we? I think the Lord does that with us as well. He's trying to instill gratitude in us. That we are thankful for every single day. Yes, I know when I wake up in the morning, he's ordered my steps. There's an angel that's been assigned to me to keep me in all my way. Mm -hmm. To protect me. If something happens on the left hand, something happens on the right hand. Somehow, I'm going to be all right. Amen. Because he is watching out. I am thankful. Amen. I'm thankful for your love. I'm thankful for your prayers. We're finally starting to see coming over the other top from a month without any without any paycheck from earlier this year. My goodness, finally starting to come out of that 90 days later since I started that new job. I know it's 90 days because they just let me know getting an extra dollar an hour starting this week and my vacation time started to kick in. So I know 90 days have come and gone. But finally, but when the Lord brought that miracle through after being unjustly released from a job on one incident, amen, that wasn't even really my fault, but what you gonna do? But the Lord you know, you, you can't let yourself get discouraged in the little things. He's going to come through for you. Let's just stand up to our feet. Let's go to the Lord right now. Let's just thank Him for the big things and the little things that He is doing, has done in our lives. And just to honor Him from our hearts. Amen. Father, we just come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, is this man who saw that he was cleansed, Lord, and came to you to thank you.